Welcome to the Cutout Bin. Hey, I'm your host, uh, Dolby D. The name comes from the old school days, you know, of the first round of vinyl. Uh, when you would go to the record store, uh, there would be titles that uh, were overstocked or discontinued by the manufacturer, uh, and they would have a little slot cut in them, and then they would be put in the cutout bin. And so I just like the idea of thinking that some of these titles are interesting and overlooked or not as well received, even though the quality might be fantastic. So I decided I wanted to focus on the undiscovered gems or the underrepresented items in pop culture with the cutout bin. Just to get started, thought we'd put out a pile of records here that I just picked up. Thought I'd go through this pile here and give you an idea about uh, my interests, my tastes, you know, and see if uh, these are some of the things that might click with you and make you want to click on some of our other videos or keep watching or subscribe. First in my pile, ordered this direct from the band They Might Be Giants. This is the long awaited, finally on vinyl, vinyl pressing of their 2001 album Mink Car. Now, uh, this album, unfortunately, was released on September 11th, 2001. Uh, but also, uh, their label that they had uh, recently re-signed to uh, Restless Records went under soon after. So uh, the album went out of print uh, and it was never originally released on vinyl. Let's just uh, slide it open for the first time here. record comes with a lyric inner sleeve and it's pressed on white vinyl comes the download card including a bonus track unfortunately we've got some seam splits from shipping so that's mink car by the Nike giant this is an eBay purchase you will learn very quickly if you watch uh, more cut up in videos uh, we've got a co-host here monkey doing Monkey Speaks' his Mind segments. We love the monkeys here at the Cutout Bin. This is a Japanese Monkey's Greatest Hits album from the mid-70s. Uh, this is on Bell. Bell is the label that Call Gems, the Monkey's original label, folded into. And later, everything from Bell folded into Arista Records, or Arista Records. Uh, it's a nice, uh, nice Japanese package. It's a gatefold with a uh, fold-out poster and lyric sheet inside. Good condition, little foxing, but uh, very happy with this. I think it was about $60 and I jumped right on it because uh, it would be in good condition. Uh, love the Japanese pressings of the Monkees albums, uh, especially when they come with the Obi. Very glad to add that to my collection. Uh, mail ordered from England. This is the first EP in my failed songwriting career by XTC's Andy Partridge. Uh, the idea of this collection is that uh, Andy Partridge is releasing songs that uh, were kind of written to order or in the style of other artists trying to sell them as a songwriter only. These are demos and he has tactfully decided not to reveal uh, who the songs are for but he has said that this song, Great Day, uh, was in the style of Paul McCartney and did not know that there was actually a song by Paul McCartney called Great Day. When it first issued uh, last year, one of the things that they have that I like to order is a combo package with a CD and vinyl. Uh, but at the time I got around to ordering this, the CD was in stock, but the vinyl was not. So I had to go back and reorder the vinyl when it was available again. Uh, like typical, British 12 inch singles, it really is just a cardstock sleeve with vinyl inside. Uh, unfortunately, this also suffered from some seam splits in transit. My Failed Songwriting Career EP number one by Andy Partridge, volume two coming soon. Speaking of XTC, uh, picked this up in a store in Tampa, Florida. XTC's fourth album, this has a lot of uh, punchy songs on it, uh, a couple of great singles, Generals and Majors, Sergeant Rock is going to help me, Sensible Street, I'm sorry, Respectable Street, uh, Towers of London, 
And then just a, a couple of uh, quirky tracks that fans love, such as uh, Burning With Optimism's Flames, Rocket From A Bottle, No Language In Our Lungs, Love At First Sight. It's just a fun, bouncy record. And uh, probably, I, in my opinion, they didn't beat it again until they did Skylarking uh, six years later. I already have uh, vintage pressings of this album. However, Andy Partridge is supervising the vinyl reissues that they're releasing on his Ape House label. Carefully mastered, carefully pressed, very uh, lovingly packaged, uh, trying to keep it very faithful to the original, like to support that idea. And I have yet to open this one, but uh, it's XTC's Black Sea. Uh, at the same store, saw some unknown vintage of the Beatles Revolver album. Uh, this is my favorite Beatles album. Uh, sleeve looks really good, and at $25, uh, couldn't really pass that up. The sleeve didn't look beat up. The vinyl looks like to be in good condition. Parlophone EMI. I have to double check which pressing this is. It probably is a 80s pressing, though, which would be interesting because one of the first uh, versions of this album I actually had was a Parlophone UK version which had the very interesting uh, defect in a way that one side was done from a mono stamper, the other side from a stereo stamper. Uh, unfortunately, I did not keep that copy in great condition, so uh, I'm sure it would be a nice collector's item if it was in great condition, but since it's my favorite Beatles album, I can't hurt to have another copy. This was the main reason I stopped by that store in the first place. Since I am a monkeys fanatic and I'm working on a project involving a monkeys discography, basically this was a must buy for research purposes <laughs> and to feed my hobby. But uh, so had to get this uh, recent Rhino repress of Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn and Jones Limited, which is my favorite monkeys album. They have kept the catalog number from the original Colgems pressing and the Colgems logo, even uh, COS 104. Uh, as always, they tried to keep the text on the spine in the same font as the originals. The only thing that doesn't look vintage is that it's a, it's a cardstock fold-over sleeve as opposed to a, a tip-on tip sleeve uh, with, with a slick like the original would have been. Rhinos released these albums many times. Uh, it's probably not a new cutting, uh, have to double check exactly which version they did press this from. The last CD issue that they did of this album was back in 2007. Uh, so that was the version that they've been using for other reissues. Since then, it's either that or they could have used a vinyl master from the 80s, which they have done for some of the other pressings. Uh, so then some local pickups, uh, checking out a couple uh, local stores that I had not been to yet. Uh, by the way, I'm in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Uh, so we did head out to Mojo Vinyl. Uh, I always go right to the monkey section. And every time I see a copy of the monkey's headquarters, uh, the first thing I do is turn it over and look to see which photos on the back. This version of the album is known as the Beards cover. Uh, it's a repressing, uh, which replaces the photo on the back here. They had put a photo of the producer and labeled it with including the engineer, Hank Tialco, but it accidentally was not a photo of Hank. And so uh, they replaced the photo with this group photo of the band in the midst of their recording with full beards celebrating Hank. <laughs> so. Uh, these are a little harder to come by, but uh, I'm not having too much trouble finding them every now and then. I have, finding them in great condition is difficult. Um, the mono ones are much easier to find. There are stereo ones, but the only stereo ones I've come across have been pretty beat up. In fact, this one is pretty beat up. It's got a, it's almost missing its spine. Um, but anytime I see one, especially a price of eight bucks, for the, for the beard cover, definitely worth that. 
Also found at this shop, this single, Elvis Costello single that I did not have in my collection. It is a, a colored disc in a poly sleeve of the song Green Shirt with an extended mix on the first side, the original version and Beyond Belief from the Imperial Bedroom album on side two. Uh, but Green Shirt on green vinyl, uh, very interesting and it's a extended version which is uh, probably not not the most beloved version. The poly sleeves a little beat up. It's about cracking on the side. But uh, since I did not actually have this one in my collection, uh, I picked it up. Uh, then I just happened to glance in the soundtrack section, and uh, this quirky movie uh, that I enjoy, uh, Earth Girls Are Easy, uh, with Gina Davis, Jeff Goldblum, and Julie Brown. Not the downtown Julie Brown, the West Coast Julie Brown. <laughs> Famous for uh, Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun. They wrote this movie based on another song of hers called Earth Girls Are Easy. Uh, but uh, this is a pretty uh, quirky, eclectic soundtrack. Uh, and it said signed, so I turned it over and saw it was signed by Julie Brown. So I was like, well, heck yes. I mean, I like this soundtrack. I like this movie. I like Julie Brown. Right there, that Julie Brown. I decided to pick it up. This was released just before the B-52s kind of revival with their Cosmic Thing album. The song Cosmic Thing appeared in the movie and on the soundtrack. Two songs by Julie Brown. There is a song called Earth Girls Are Easy, but it is not the, it's just very loosely uh, based on the one that Julie Brown originally sang, which is not on this record. There's an Information Society track. There's a Daryl Hall and Sean Oates cover of Love Train. Uh, there's a, very uh, 80s version of Route 66 by Depeche Mode. There's Jesus and Mary Chain, Stuart Copeland. Uh, it's a very quirky soundtrack, very quirky movie, but signed by Julie Brown. I just had to get it. And a promo copy to boot. Then I moved on to Comeback Vinyl in Alpharetta, Georgia. The first thing I came across is a radio station copy here, uh, WUOG, for four bucks. I love this song by 10,000 Maniacs. This is Like the Weather. Uh, it's the same track on both sides. I do have a habit of picking up singles of tracks that I really like, but usually not 12 inch singles, but it was a promo. Can't go wrong for four bucks. And at the same store, at Comeback Vinyl, I also found another copy of the Monkey's Headquarters with the beard cover. Also some spine damage, a little bit better, but, um, and a slightly better price, only $6 for this one. And then most of the Amy Man that I own is on CD. Uh, however, I noticed uh, a very interestingly packaged album with kind of a uh, spinner on the cover uh, for her album Charmer, which is one that I ne had not picked up on CD on her own Super Ego Records label. So I decided, you know, because interesting packaging variation, you know, uh, not having owned the record yet, uh, I did pick up this copy and it was brand new vinyl. Uh, then on another recent trip uh, back to Florida, uh, traveling through Gainesville, uh, stopped at a shop there and picked up two Elvis Costellos. Good price on these. Uh, this one, obviously, uh, a chunk out of it. However, I would have just left it if I hadn't picked it up and gone in to find. Since it was a UK pressing, oh look at that there. Didn't notice that either. However, um, it did include the poster. I do not have a copy with this poster yet. So for six dollars to uh, possibly add this to uh, another copy in better condition. Uh, I thought that was uh, worth grabbing. I was gonna say it's one of my favorite Elvis Costello albums, but you know the the early albums. It's they're 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 all pretty darn good. There's a lot of great songs on this one. It's a lot of fun. It's jam packed with uh, twenty tracks. But then this is probably hard to say. It might be my favorite Elvis Costello album, Blood and Chocolate. 
It's a 1986 album that came out around the same time as his fairly well-regarded King of America album, which is not one that I'm actually that big into. It's it's kind of got a very more acoustic Americana sound. Blood and Chocolate is noisy and rough, uh, and it's got melodies and songwriting despair. You know, it's very it's very uh, very immediate, very punchy. A lot of fun, this record. And this one was a promo. Eight bucks. Uh, I was gonna say, all right, for a promo copy of the record, it is an American pressing. So nothing too fancy special. You know, I don't have a UK on this one, but uh, you know, I, I usually find uh, the promo copies have a better quality in, some, in a lot of cases. Uh, this one looks pretty clean. Uh, label looks good. I'm sure it sounds great, even though it's mid eighties American pressing, which is probably not the most fantastic, but it, probably a stock copy. It could be just a stock copy stamped for promo, but it could be pressed for promo too. It can't be a hundred percent sure. So that's it for our vinyl right now. I hope you found uh, that interesting and hope you'll stick around and see more here on the cutout bin. This is again, Dolby D signing off for now. Please uh, give us your thumbs up, share and enjoy, and we'll see you next time.